Hello, I'm Alvin Daniel. I'm product lead for Project Leonardo here at PlayStation. And I am an Asian American male, uh, middle aged. Uh, I have black hair, although these days it's turning salt and peppery. I'm clean shaven and I'm wearing glasses. Hi, I'm Paul Amadeus Lane. I am an accessibility consultant. I consult exclusively with Sony PlayStation, the worldwide studios, and I am a middle aged uh, black male. I'm wearing a newspaper boy hat, my mom calls it, with a blue button down shirt with a blue and gray bow tie. My pronouns are he and him, and I am so delighted to be with the rest of the crew. Hi, my name is Sam Chappelle. I'm an accessibility design researcher at Insomniac Games. My pronouns are he, him. I'm a white male in my mid thirties with long brown hair, glasses, brown eyes, and I'm wearing an Insomniac Games t-shirt. We're excited today to have and host another accessibility community spotlight uh, to follow up actually on the very exciting news uh, that we were uh, able to announce at CES earlier this year in January on Project Leonardo. This is PlayStation's very first wireless accessibility controller. And I'm joined here today with two very dear friends, Paul and Sam, to speak more about this project. Paul, could you tell us a little bit about how you got into video games and how did you become a video gaming uh, uh, accessibility expert? Well, Alvin, you are my origin story. So I'll go ahead and give you my origin story. <laughs> well, I, I've always been an avid gamer. I, I love video games. Video games have always been my passion. And two decades before my accident, you know, I lived and breathed and just walked and talked video games. What happened when I had my accident, I lost that ability to play. And it was like I lost a long lost friend. So for many years, I set out to see how I can be reunited with my friend. So I found out that I was able to manipulate like the, the, the game controller to be able to, you know, play video games again. And then I started thinking, how many others out there have the frustrations that I have due to a disability and not able to game like I was? Sam, same question to you. Could you tell us a little bit about how you got started in video games and, and uh, a bit about your journey to become an accessible gaming expert? I was born with cerebral palsy, which affects my left side. So I primarily just use my right hand for everything. Um, I saw doctors about it when I was very young and doctors suggested to my parents that I use video games as a form of physical therapy. Um, to incorporate my left hand into gaming, you know, use it on a joystick controller, uh, things of that nature. So the following Christmas, my parents surprised me uh, with a game console, and uh, it's just been nonstop ever since. I've been playing games uh, and kind of overcoming those barriers where I could, and, and just thinking of like those little ways in which it could be slightly better if this or that were tweaked. So that passion was instilled in me early, and. Um, Never in my wildest dreams did I think that I'd actually, you know, get into this field professionally. So it's just been a dream come true. Alvin, can we get the origin story of Project Leonardo? How did it come about? And how did you come up with the name Project Leonardo? It is not named after a certain mutant ninja turtle. Uh, <laughs> the truth, the truth is, I was actually reading a biography of Leonardo da Vinci uh, by Walter Isaacson uh, when um, this project first came about. And I thought Da Vinci, Leonardo Da Vinci would be the perfect thematic inspiration for this project. You know, drawing upon the talents of many people in the company and the input from the community and experts such as yourselves. Uh, we, you know, we, we think we've got something special here and uh, we really can't wait uh, to, to bring this to you. The first time you opened that package, what was your first impression? What did you think? I go back and I remember the, uh, the briefcase, the, the top secret briefcase with a lock code, right? Got it uh, delivered to my house and uh, put in the code, unlocked it and saw the equipment. And it was just, it was amazing. It was exactly what I had hoped for. There were some modifications because I, I think looking back, I think it was uh, round one. So there were some things that I saw that uh, I definitely communicated in the feedback uh, that I would like to have seen uh, tweet and they were and the next iteration, everything got smoother and smoother. Paul, so one day on your doorstep, super secret prototype package appears, you open the box and 
what do you think? And I saw it and I was like, what am I going to do with this right here? But then, then I, I, I looked at the instructions, you know, that, that, that was provided. And, and I was like, whoa, this is going to be awesome because as a, as a quadriplegic and somebody who's been disabled for over 30 years, I wake up every morning trying to problem solve. So when I saw that, that briefcase with the, with the controller in there, I was like, I'm looking forward to solving these problems right here when it comes to accessibility and gaming and, and then just providing feedback when I saw it and, and saw the different iterations. I was like, wow, this is really, really awesome. We found that yourself and, and other test players were doing things we did not anticipate, did not expect. Uh, it was kind of this emergent way of using Linado with setups and configurations we had just had not occurred to us, actually. Uh, so that was both satisfying and gratifying to learn. Actually, it's like, oh, they want to use it in this way. Wow, we didn't think of that. Um, so that, that was really good to learn. There's so many awesome things about Leonardo. Uh, just, to, just to go back, because something else just occurred to me while we were all talking, um, the, the different joystick caps that you can put on the controller. Having a big kind of arcade style thing instead of the small one that's more difficult for me to use on the left or right stick to be able to put a full on joystick for that so that I can use my left hand and even though it doesn't have the degree of motion that my right hand does to be able to use that to actually control the camera again was was really amazing because it was just something that I couldn't do with those smaller thumbsticks. Yeah, I have to say the people really love that arcade style stick. I've seen people use it by cupping it from the bottom or, or manipulating it from the top. Uh, it's got that kind of old school vibe around it. Um, so that, that's fantastic. That's great to hear. Hey, Alvin, when you get all this feedback from us, you know, did the team feel kind of overwhelmed or did the team kind of embrace, you know, all of this different feedback? We got a ton of feedback, I have to say. Uh, Leonardo is really interesting in that we had uh, user testing going on uh, in three locations, in Japan, uh, here in the United States, and also in London, actually. So uh, I can honestly say someone somewhere in the world was working with Leonardo at any given <laughs> moment of the day. We have very carefully curated, you know, the kind of the most impactful features that can most broadly uh, affect uh, everyone in, in terms of improving accessibility to the controller. So Alvin, why do this for our community? I, I think the biggest reason is play has no limits, right? It's, it's our tagline. To many of us here at the company, it also means inclusion, right? No limits. We want everyone in on this party. Players were trying to adapt themselves to the controller. And with Leonardo, we're turning down its head. We now want the controller to adapt to you. And so more people can, can, can come in and, and enjoy these game experiences. That actually um, brings up a really good follow-up. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the team behind Leonardo and some of the organizations that you work with throughout the process? The team here at PlayStation is truly multidisciplinary. Um, we have, you know, the, if the engineering team, obviously, uh, but that it includes both the hardware and the software teams, uh, includes experts such as yourself who, who are embedded with the studios who are already doing kind of world-class uh, design in accessible gaming, who taught us a lot actually, like what were game developers at the cutting edge doing and wanting to do uh, and expected from an accessible controller. Um, so that was, that was a very valuable to learn. We partnered with uh, many travel organizations, I'll name a few, um, Able Gamers, uh, our friends over in the UK Special Effect, um, Stack Up, they're a military veterans, um, a disabled veterans uh, organization that advocates for, for veterans with disabilities. They all lent very important insights into what challenges we needed to address. Because I have to say, when we first start in the space, you know, you're given the task of, hey, go make an accessible controller. It, it just seemed daunting, like, like the, the, the spectrum of needs that we had to be able to accommodate and address was super challenging. And without the help of folks like yourself uh, and, and, and some of the, the organizations I mentioned earlier and the feedback from the community, we wouldn't have been able to kind of hone down and focus on kind of three key challenges um, that today may give you uh, may serve as impediments to you being being able to use a standard controller 
And uh, so th those three challenges, they were kind of touched on in the announcement are, we wanted to design a controller that you didn't need to hold in order to use. Um, there's kind of implicit assumption you just pick up a controller and, 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 and uh, manipulate it. And you know that may not be the case for everyone. The second challenge we wanted to address is making it easier to press the buttons on the controller. Uh, and I think with a standard controller, you may find that the buttons are too small or too uh, densely packed. And, and also the buttons uh, can appear on two surfaces, right? You've got the face buttons on the top and then the shoulder and trigger buttons on a completely different plane. And that can be challenging uh, to, to interact with. And then finally, it was the thumbsticks. Today on a standard controller, thumbsticks are very fixed. Um, they're a fixed height, fixed width, fixed orientation. There's rigidity built in there. And there's a kind of an implicit assumption that you can make this very specific hand geometry with thumbs <laughs> to be able to place uh, digits on top of the thumbsticks to, to interact with them. And we really wanted to design something with a lot of flexibility in those three areas. And I think the ability to customize the controller by taking the different button caps off and substituting them and really making it your own. And, and because Leonardo is a kit, I think it also means that it can evolve with you as your needs potentially change. So the controller you start using on day one could over time change to something, you know, at, at day 100 or later, uh, if your needs uh, should change, right? You can continue to, to adjust the controller to make it your own. I'm glad you brought that up because there are some small buttons on that controller, like the options button, the share button. So to be able to remap those uh, to a bigger uh, button is just is fantastic. Um, because especially for that that pause press, you know, when you're when you're under pressure because there's something exciting going on, you just have to stop the action. Uh, having a larger button to press uh, in 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 the time in time is uh, is very important. It's nice to have a controller that will meet those needs as you get a little older, because you may not be as fast, you may not be be as quick uh, when it comes to pushing buttons. Uh, but to but to have this evolve with you, you know, I'm so glad, so glad you shared that because I, I saw myself with the different iterations, you know, and in, in, you know evolving over time over the way I would game. So so that was a really awesome thing. And 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 Sam, when you first saw what it was going to do for you you know, with gaming and making it more accessible for you, you know, you being in the industry, what did that mean for you that now this is going to be a reality? To be able to um, use both hands in gaming again, both as someone who just plays games and a game designer, it like, it kind of hit me twofold and it was just, it was, it was just wonderful. I, you know, t to take some of those games that are harder, and really require, you know, you to have full movement on both sticks and, and things like that. And to be able to say like, well, I've been able to kind of get by using the movement stick and then quickly shifting to the camera stick and back and forth. Um, but it, you know, sometimes that works, but for those more challenging games, sometimes it doesn't. So to be able to say, Hey, I've got this, I can just put my left hand on my my joystick on my Leonardo to control the camera while my uh, other hand is able to use the other stick. It's just, it's awesome. I'm, I'm looking forward to going back and, and playing games that I had previously been stuck in. You know, just that's that's going to be great to get those, uh, was it the, the trophies and, and things, those, those blockers will be removed and no longer blockers. And I can point to the trophy and say like, hey, I got it. Finally, in some of these games, I had been stopped on for years. When you look at Project Leonardo and some of the, the great work that's being done at Insomniac Studios with the features being put in, how do you feel about this collaboration and just this uh, this mesh of, of wonderful ideas? I feel like it's, you know, it's true harmony when you look at it because there is a lot of complementary features uh, between Leonardo and a lot of the software uh, for motor accessibility uh, players and features uh, to kind of cover each other and help each other and just expand that customizability and those options. Hey, hey Alvin, I think Sam is, is, is happy that all these things are in there. So I won't be bugging him via text message. Hey, Sam, I'm stuck. <laughs> Can you help me out? So Sam appreciates that, Alvin. So Paul, you've been going to CSUN for many years 
For those who don't know, could you tell us a little bit about the event uh, and, and why do you go there? To me, CSUN is like the Super Bowl for accessibility out there because there, there are so many organizations out there. Being able to, to be uh, amongst ones helps you to understand what they go through as well. And then what that does, that helps us to have this coalition that we can work together so that we don't leave any of our uh, disability brothers and sisters behind. So Paul, what is your favorite memory as a gaming accessibility consultant? Well, Sam, you know, I thought about this question and, and, and I'm about to call it, I'll get emotional when I, when I share this and I'm not being a drama king. I promise I'm not. It's just, this is real, real raw emotion right here. My most memorable moment was being asked to be a part of something big. You know, I would talk to different game developers out there with different studios, different uh, companies out there saying, Hey, you know, I, I got some ideas. If you ever need some help as a consultant, let me know. And no one, no one gave me that shot until Sam Thompson called me one day and said, Paul, we want to bring you in on a project. If it wasn't for Sam taking a shot on me, I never would be a part of Project Leonardo. I held it together, Sam. I didn't have any tears, but it was really emotional, you know, thinking about something like that. Shout outs to Sam Thompson because he also gave me my start. He believes in this and, and so do so many people at PlayStation. It's truly inspiring to see and experience how many people really, really want to make gaming better for everybody. So to wrap things up, uh, I wanted to give a shout out to the community. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your feedback. Project Leonardo wouldn't be what it is today uh, without uh, your feedback, without the input from experts um, such as Paul and Sam. So thank you very much for helping us bring this project to life. Uh, the team will be at CSUN. We're, we're excited that this year uh, PlayStation will be part of the Sony booth at CSUN. The project is still in development. We'll uh, be able to show hardware, but we are working hard uh, to get it into your hands as soon as possible. There's a lot more to talk about Leonardo. What we've shown so far has focused primarily on the hardware, but there's a whole other aspect, the software support that we're building into Leonardo. But there's going to be a lot of additional flexibility and capabilities uh, that no other PlayStation controller has ever had before that we're going to be excited to share. So see you soon. Thanks. PlayStation.